Library Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Chapter 45 Krishna recovers the son of his teacher when Lord Krishna saw Vasudeva and Devaki standing in a reverential attitude. He immediately expanded his influence of Yogamaya so that they could treat him and Balarama as children. As in the material world the relationship existing between father and mother and children can be established amongst different living entities by the influence of the illusory energy, so, by the influence of Yogamaya, the devotee can establish a relationship in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead is his child. After creating this situation by his Yogamaya, Krishna, appearing with his elder brother, Balarama, as the most illustrious son in the dynasty of the Sadvatas, very submissively and respectfully addressed Vasudeva and Devaki, My dear father and mother, although you have always been anxious for the protection of our lives, you could not enjoy the pleasure of having us as your babies, as your growing boys and as your adolescent youths. Krishna indirectly praised the fatherhood of Nanda Maharaja and motherhood of Yasoda as most glorious because although he and Balarama were not their born sons, Nanda and Yasoda actually enjoyed their childhood pastimes. By nature's own arrangement, the childhood of the embodied living being is enjoyed by his parents. Even in the animal kingdom, parents are found to be affectionate to their cubs. Being captivated by the activities of their offspring, they take much care for their well-being. As for Vasudeva and Devaki, they were always anxious for the protection of their sons, Krishna and Balarama. That is why Krishna, after his appearance, was immediately transferred to another's house. Balarama was also transferred, from Devaki's womb to Rohini's womb. Vasudeva and Devaki were full of anxieties for Krishna's and Balarama's protection, but they could not enjoy their childhood pastimes. Krishna said, Unfortunately, being ordered by our fate, we could not be raised by our own parents to enjoy childhood pleasures at home. My dear father and mother, a man cannot repay his debt to his parents, from whom he gets this body, which can bestow upon him all the benefits of material existence. According to the Vedic injunctions, this human form of life enables one to perform all kinds of religious activities, fulfill all kinds of desires and acquire all kinds of wealth, and only in this human form is there every possibility that one can get liberation from material existence. This body is produced by the combined efforts of the father and mother. Every human being should be obliged to his parents and understand that he cannot repay his debt to them. If, after growing up, a son does not try to satisfy his parents by his actions or by an endowment of riches, he is surely punished after death by the superintendent of death and made to eat his own flesh. If a person is able to care for or give protection to old parents, a chaste wife, children, the spiritual master, brahmanas and other dependents but does not do so, he is considered already dead, although he is supposedly breathing. My dear father and mother, you have always been anxious for our protection, but unfortunately we could not render any service to you. Until now we have simply wasted our time, due to reasons beyond our control we could not serve you. Mother and father, please excuse us for our sinfulness. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead was speaking as an innocent boy in very sweet words, Vasudeva and Devaki became captivated by parental affection and embraced him with great pleasure. They were amazed and could not speak or answer the words of Krishna, but simply embraced him and Balarama in great affection and remained silent, shedding incessant tears. Thus having consoled his father and mother, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appearing as the beloved son of Devaki, approached his grandfather Ugrasena and announced that Ugrasena would now be the king of the Yadu kingdom. Kamsa had been forcibly ruling the kingdom of Yadu, in spite of the presence of his father, whom he had arrested. But after the death of Kamsa, his father was released and announced to be the monarch of the Yadu kingdom. It appears that in those days in the western part of India there were many small kingdoms, ruled by the Yadu dynasty, and Akka dynasty, Vrzni dynasty and Poha dynasty, Maharaja Ugrasena belonged to the Poha dynasty. Therefore Krishna indirectly declared that the king of the Poha dynasty would be the emperor of the other small kingdoms. Krishna willingly asked Maharaja Ugrasenya to rule over himself and Balarama because they were his subjects. The word Praja is used both for progeny and for citizens, so Krishna belonged to the Praja, both as a grandson of Maharaja Ugrasenya's and as a member of the Yadu dynasty. Thus he voluntarily accepted the rule of Maharaja Ugrasenya. He informed Ugrasenya, being cursed by Yayati. The kings of the Yadu dynasty may not occupy the throne. It will be our pleasure to act as your servants. My full cooperation with you will make your position more exalted and secure so that the kings of other dynasties will not hesitate to pay their respective revenues. Protected by me, you will be honored even by the demigods from the heavenly planets. My dear grandfather, out of fear of my late uncle Kamsa, all the kings belonging to the Yadu, Vrasni, Andaka, Madhu, Dasarha, and Kukura dynasties were very anxious and disturbed. 
Now you can pacify them all and give them assurance of security. The whole kingdom will be peaceful. All the kings in the neighboring area had left their homes in fear of Kamsa and were living in distant parts of the country. Now, after the death of Kamsa and the reinstallment of Ugrasenya as king, the neighboring kings were given all kinds of presentations and comforts. Then they returned to their respective homes. After this nice political arrangement, the citizens of Madara were pleased to live in Madara, being protected by the strong arms of Krishna and Balarama. On account of good government in the presence of Krishna and Balarama, the inhabitants of Madara felt complete satisfaction in the fulfillment of all their material desires and necessities, and because they saw Krishna and Balarama daily, face to face, they soon forgot all material miseries completely. As soon as they saw Krishna and Balarama coming out on the street, very nicely dressed and smiling and looking at the citizens with grace, the citizens were immediately filled with loving ecstasies simply by seeing the personal presence of Mukunda. The name Mukunda refers to one who can award liberation and transcendental bliss. Krishna's presence acted as such a vitalizing tonic that not only the younger generation but even the old man of Madara became fully invigorated with youthful energy and strength by regularly seeing him. Nanda Maharaja and Yasoda were also living in Madara because Krishna and Balarama were there, but after some time they wanted to go back to Vrindavana. Krishna and Balarama went before Nanda and Yasoda and very affectionately embraced them, and then the two lords spoke as follows, Dear father and mother, although we were born of Vasudeva and Devaki, you have been our real father and mother, because from our very birth and childhood you raised us with great affection and love. Your affectionate love for us was more than anyone can offer one's own children. You are actually our father and mother, because you raised us as your own children when we were just like orphans. For certain reasons we were rejected by our father and mother, and you protected us. Dear father and mother, we know that you will feel separation upon returning to Vrindavana and leaving us here. But please rest assured that we shall come back to Vrindavana just after giving some satisfaction to our real father and mother, Vasudeva and Devaki, and our grandfather and other family members. Krishna and Balarama thus satisfied Nanda and Yasoda by sweet words and by presentations of various kinds of clothing, ornaments and copper utensils. They satisfied them, along with their friends and neighbors who had come with them from Vrindavana to Matara, as fully as possible. On account of excessive parental affection for Balarama and Krishna, Nanda Maharaja felt tears in his eyes, and he embraced them and started with the cowherd man for Vrindavana. After this, Vasudeva had his sons initiated by sacred thread as the token of second birth, which is essential for the higher castes of human society. Vasudeva called for his family priest and learned Brahmanas, and the sacred thread ceremony of Krishna and Balarama was duly performed. During this ceremony, Vasudeva gave various ornaments in charity to the Brahmanas and endowed them with cows decorated with silken cloths and golden ornaments. Then Vasudeva remembered the cows he had wanted to give in charity to the Brahmanas after the birth of Krishna and Balarama, but being imprisoned by Kamsa at that time, Vasudeva had been able to do so only within his mind, for Kamsa had stolen all his cows. With the death of Kamsa his cows were released, and now Vasudeva gave the actual cows to the Brahmanas. Then Balarama and Krishna were duly initiated with the sacred thread ceremony, and they repeated the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra. The Gayatri Mantra is offered to disciples after the sacred thread ceremony, and Balarama and Krishna properly discharge the duties of chanting this mantra. Anyone who executes the chanting of this mantra has to abide by certain principles and vows. Although Balarama and Krishna are transcendental personalities, they strictly follow the regulated principles. They were initiated by their family priest, Gargakarya usually known as Gargamuni, the Akarya of the Yadu dynasty. According to Vedic culture, every respectable family has an Akarya, or spiritual master. One is not considered a perfectly cultured man without being initiated and trained by an Akarya. It is said, therefore, that one who has approached an Akarya is actually in perfect knowledge. Lord Krishna and Lord Balarama are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all education and knowledge. There was no need for them to accept a spiritual master, or Akarya. Yet for the instruction of ordinary men they also accepted a spiritual master for advancement in spiritual knowledge. It is customary, after being initiated in the Gayatri Mantra, for one to live away from home for some time under the care of the Akarya, to be trained in spiritual life. During this period, one has to work under the spiritual master as an ordinary menial servant. There are many rules and regulations for a Brahmakari living under the care of an Akarya and Krishna and Balarama strictly followed those regulated principles while living under the instruction of their spiritual master, Sandipani Muni, who was a resident of Avantapura, in the northern Indian district of Ajain. According to scriptural injunctions, a spiritual master should be respected and regarded on an equal level with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Krishna and Balarama exactly followed those principles with great devotion and underwent the regulations of Brahmacharya. Thus they satisfied their spiritual master, who instructed them in Vedic knowledge. Being very satisfied, Sandipani Muni instructed them in all the intricacies of Vedic wisdom and in supplementary literatures such as the Upanishads. Because Krishna and Balarama happened to be Kshatriyas, they were specifically trained in military science, politics and ethics. Politics includes such departments of knowledge as how to make peace, how to fight, how to pacify, how to divide and rule and how to give shelter. All these items were fully explained and instructed to Krishna and Balarama. The ocean is the source of water in a river. The cloud is created by the evaporation of ocean water, and the same water is distributed as rain all over the surface of the earth and then returns to the ocean in rivers. So Krishna and Balarama, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are the source of all knowledge, but because they were playing like ordinary human boys, they set the example so that everyone would receive knowledge from the right source. Thus they agreed to take knowledge from a spiritual master. After hearing only once from their teacher, Krishna and Balarama learned all the arts and sciences. In 64 days and 64 nights, they learned all the necessary arts and sciences required in human society. During the daytime they took lessons on a subject from the teacher, and by nightfall they were expert in the department of knowledge. First of all they learned how to sing, how to compose songs and how to recognize the different tunes. They learned the favorable and unfavorable accents and meters, how to sing different kinds of rhythms and melodies, and how to follow them by beating different kinds of drums. They learned how to dance to the rhythm of melody and different songs. They learned how to write dramas, and they learned the various types of painting, from simple village arts up to the highest professional stage. They also learned how to paint Dilika on the face by making different kinds of dots on the forehead and cheeks. Then they learned the art of making paintings on the floor with a liquid paste of rice and flour. Such paintings are very popular at auspicious ceremonies performed at household affairs or in the temple. They learned how to make a resting place with flowers and how to decorate clothing and limbs with colorful paintings. They also learned how to set valuable jewels and ornaments. They learned the art of wringing water pots. Water pots are filled with water to a certain measurement so that as one beats on the pots, different tones are produced, and when the pots are beaten together they produce a melodious sound. They also learned how to splash water in the rivers or lakes while taking a bath among friends. They learned how to decorate with flowers. This art of decorating can still be seen in various temples of Vrindavana during the summer season. It is called Fulabhati. The dais, the throne, the walls and the ceiling are all fully decorated, and a small, aromatic fountain of flowers is fixed in the center. Because of these floral decorations, the people, fatigued from the heat of the summer, become refreshed. Krishna and Balarama learned the art of dressing hair in various styles and fixing a helmet in different positions on the head. They also learn how to set up a theatrical stage, how to decorate dramatic actors with costumes and with flower ornaments over the year, and how to sprinkle sandalwood pulp and water to produce a nice fragrance. They also learned the art of performing magical feats. Within the magical field there is an art called Bahurupi, by which a person dresses himself in such a way that when he approaches a friend he cannot be recognized. Krishna and Balaram also learned how to make various syrups and beverages required at various times, having various tastes and intoxicating effects. They also learned different types of sewing and embroidery work, as well as how to manipulate thin threads for dancing puppets. This art includes how to string wires on musical instruments, such as the V-I-N-A, sitar, Isaraja and tambura, to produce melodious sounds. Then they learned how to make and solve riddles. They learned the art of how even a dull student can very quickly learn the alphabet and read books. Then they learned how to rehearse and act out a drama. They also studied the art of solving crossword puzzles, filling up the missing spaces and making complete words. They also learned how to draw and read pictographic literature. In some countries in the world, pictographic literature is still current. A story is represented by pictures, for instance, a man and house are pictured to represent a man going home. Krishna and Balaram also learned the art of architecture how to construct residential buildings. They learned to recognize valuable jewels by studying their luster and colors. Then they learned the art of placing jewels in a gold and silver setting so that they look very beautiful. They also learned how to study soil to find minerals. This study of soil is now a greatly specialized science, but formerly it was common knowledge even for the ordinary man. They learned to study herbs and plants to discover how they would act as medicine for different ailments. By studying the different species of plants, they learned how to crossbreed plants and trees and get different types of fruits. They learned how to train and engage rams and cocks in fighting for sport. They then learned how to teach parrots to speak and to answer the questions of human beings. They learned practical psychology, 
how to influence another's mind and thus induce another to act according to one's own desire. Sometimes this is called hypnotism. They learned how to wash hair, dye it different colors and curl it in different ways. They learned the art of telling what is written in someone's book without actually seeing it. They learned to tell what is contained in another's fist. Sometimes children imitate this art, although not very accurately. One child keeps something within his fist and asks his friend, can you tell what is within? And the friend gives some suggestion, although he actually cannot tell. But there is an art by which one can understand and actually tell what is held within the fist. Krishna and Balarama learned how to speak and understand the languages of various countries. Not only did they learn the languages of human beings, Krishna could also speak even with animals and birds. Evidence of this is found in the Vaisnava literature compiled by the Gosvamis. Then they learn how to make carriages and airplanes from flowers. It is said in the Ramayana that after defeating Ravana, Ramakandra was carried from Lanka to Burda Varsa on a plane of flowers, called a Puspa Krishna and Balarama then learned the art of foretelling events by seeing signs. In a book called Kanarvakana, the various types of signs and omens are described. If when one is going out one sees someone with a bucket full of water, that is a very good sign. But if one sees someone with an empty bucket, it is not a good sign. Similarly, if one sees a cow being milked alongside its calf, it is a good sign. The result of understanding these signs is that one can foretell events, and Krishna and Balarama learned the science. They also learned the art of composing MATRKA. A MATRKA is like a crossword box, with three numbers in each row. If one adds any three from any side, it will come to nine. The MATRKAS are of different kinds and for different purposes. Krishna and Balarama learned the art of cutting valuable stones such as diamonds, and they also learned the art of questioning and answering by immediately composing poetry within the mind. They learned the science of the action and reaction of physical combinations and permutations. They learned the art of a psychiatrist, who can understand the psychic movements of another person. They learned how to satisfy one's desires. Desires are very difficult to fulfill, but if one desires something which is unreasonable and can never be fulfilled, the desire can be subdued and satisfied, and that is an art. By this art one can also subdue sex impulses when they are aroused, as they are even in Brahmakari life. By this art one can make even an enemy one's friend or transfer the direct action of a physical element to other things. Lord Krishna and Balarama, the reservoir of all knowledge, exhibited their perfect understanding of all the arts and sciences mentioned above. Then they offered to serve their teacher by awarding him anything he desired. This offering by the student to the teacher or spiritual master is called Gurudaksina. It is essential that a student satisfy the teacher in return for any learning received, either material or spiritual. When Krishna and Balarama offered their service in this way, the teacher, Sandipani Muni, thought it wise to ask them for something extraordinary, something no common student could offer. He therefore consulted with his wife about what to ask from them. He and his wife had already seen the extraordinary potencies of Krishna and Balarama and could understand that the two boys were the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They decided to ask for the return of their son, who had drowned in the ocean near the shore at Prabhas etc. When Krishna and Balarama heard from their teacher about the death of his son, they immediately started for Prabhas etc. on their chariot. Reaching the beach, they asked the controlling deity of the ocean to return the son of their teacher. The ocean deity immediately appeared before the Lord and offered him all respectful obeisances with great humility. The Lord said, Some time back you caused the drowning of the son of our teacher. I order you to return him. The ocean deity replied, The boy was not actually taken by me but was captured by a demon named Pankayana. This great demon generally remains deep in the water in the shape of a conch shell. The son of your teacher might be within the belly of the demon, having been devoured by him. On hearing this, Krishna delved deep into the water and caught hold of the demon Pankayana. He killed him on the spot but could not find the son of his teacher within his belly. Therefore he took the demon's dead body, in the shape of a conch shell, and returned to his chariot on the beach of Prabhas etc. From there he started for Samyamani, the residence of Yamaraja, the superintendent of death. Accompanied by his elder brother, Balarama, who is also known as Halayata, Krishna arrived there and blew on his conch shell. Hearing the vibration, Yamaraja appeared and received Sri Krishna with all respectful obeisances. Yamaraja could understand who Krishna and Balarama were, and therefore he immediately offered his humble service to the Lord. Krishna had appeared on the surface of the earth like an ordinary human being, but actually Krishna and Balarama are the super soul living within the heart of every living entity. They are Vishnu himself, but were playing just like ordinary human boys. When Yamaraja offered his services to the Lord, Sri Krishna asked him to return his teacher's son 
who had come to him as a result of his work. Considering my ruling supreme, said Krishna, you should immediately return the son of my teacher. Yamaraja returned the boy to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Krishna and Balarama brought him to his father. The brothers asked if their teacher had anything more to ask from them, but he replied, My dear sons, you have done enough for me. I am now completely satisfied. What further want can there be for a man who has disciples like you? My dear boys, you may now go home. These glorious acts of yours will always be renowned all over the world. You are above all blessing, yet it is my duty to bless you. I therefore give you the benediction that whatever you speak will remain as eternally fresh as the instructions of the Vedas. Your teachings will be honored not only within this universe or in this millennium but in all places and ages and will remain increasingly new and important. Due to this benediction from his teacher, Lord Krishna's Bhagavad Gita is ever increasingly fresh and is renowned not only within this universe but in other planets and other universes also. Being ordered by their teacher, Krishna and Balarama immediately returned home on their chariot. They traveled at great speed, like the wind, and made sounds like the crashing of clouds. All the residents of Madhura, who had not seen Krishna and Balarama for a long time, were very much pleased to see them again. They felt joyful, like a person who has regained his lost property. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 45th chapter of Krishna, Krishna recovers the son of his teacher.